UML modeling types and diagrams. So in this session, we shall discuss what are the different UML modeling types are available and what are the different diagrams and which diagram is falling under which modeling type. So it is very important to distinguish between the UML model and different diagrams are used for different types of UML modeling. Each and every diagram has got a special separate dedicated purpose and that's why the diagrams are existing side by side simultaneously. So there are three important types of UML modeling. One is the structural modeling, next one is the behavioral modeling and the last one is the architectural modeling. So let us go through them one by one. So at first we are going to discuss the structural modeling. So structural modeling captures the static features of a system and they consist of the following that is the class diagram, object diagram, deployment diagram, package diagram, composite structure diagram and component diagram. So these are the diagrams which are falling under the static features, the static view of the system. So structural model represents the framework for the system and this framework is the place where all other components exist. Hence the class diagram, component diagram and deployment diagrams are part of structural modeling and they all represent the elements and the mechanism to assemble them. The structural model never describes the dynamic behavior of the system. Class diagram is the most widely used structural diagram and it is depicting the static part of the model. So in case of, in case of this static part of the model to describe this one, we are having so many different diagrams. So there is a class diagram, we are having the object diagram, having the component diagram, deployment diagram, package diagram, composite structure diagram, but class diagram is very important and mostly we use the class diagram to depict the static part of the model. Behavioral modeling. So behavioral model describes the interaction in the system. It represents the interaction among the structural diagrams and behavioral modeling shows the dynamic nature. So structural modeling was dealing with the, the static features. So now it is uh, denoting or de dealing with the dynamic nature of the system and they consist of the following. That is the activity diagram. We are having the interaction diagram and use case diagram. So all the above show the dynamic sequence of flow in a system. So the next one is the architectural modeling. The architectural model represents the overall framework of the system and it contains both the structural and the behavioral elements of the system. The architectural model can be defined as the blueprint of the entire system because it is comprising of the structural as well as the behavioral model elements. So package diagram comes under the architectural modeling. So now email diagrams, so now here I have listed the different diagrams in one slide so that you can get a complete view here. So here you see the structural modeling, the class diagram, object diagram. An implementation diagram consists of this component diagram, deployment diagram. Under the behavioral modeling which depicts the dynamic nature of the system, structural diagram uh, uh, modeling is describing the static feature of the system. So in case of to, to describe the dynamic feature of the system, we are having the use case diagram. Interaction diagram is having two types of diagrams under it. One is the sequence diagram, last one is the collaboration diagram and here we are having the state chart diagram and activity diagram. So last one is the architectural modeling under which we will be having our package diagram. So now let us go for common uses of the UML diagrams. So what is the use of the class diagram? So model the vocabulary of the system, model simple collaborations and model a logical database schema. So we are having a separate chapter on the class diagram you can easily see them. You can watch all the videos under the class diagram chapter and you will be getting better view, better understanding on this class diagram. And it deals with the vocabulary of the system and then the simple collaborations and then logical database schema. Always remember whenever whatever the UML diagram we are drawing and especially this class diagram, 
always remember there is an underneath layer of database in our application. So there is a logical database schema how to model it that can be accessed or that can be obtained from the class diagrams. So object diagrams model object structures primary support of the functional requirement of the system. Next one is the use case diagrams model the context of the system model the requirements of the system. So that is known as the use case diagram. So model the context of the system and models the requirements of the system. So whenever we are going to draw the first diagram we usually go for the use case diagram because it will give us the high level view of the system after gathering all the requirements from the client from the users this particular requirements of the system will get represented using our use case diagram. So interaction diagram has got two varieties one is a sequence diagram next one is a collaboration diagram. Sequence diagram model interaction among the objects in time sequence and collaboration diagram means model flow of control by the organization. So that is the collaboration diagram that is our sequence diagram and for each and every diagram we are having separate chapter in this tutorial please go through all of them. So state, state chart diagrams model dynamic aspect event ordered behavior of the single use case and model reactive objects. So how the different activities are taking place due to the occurrence of some event so that will be denoted by these state chart diagrams. Activity diagrams model a workflow of a single use case or for the entire software and model an operation. So this is our state chart diagrams and this is our activity diagrams. So in case of activity diagrams how the activities are getting conducted from one to another and what are, what are the control flows are taking place. So that is the activity diagram will be depicting. In case of state chart diagram we are considering any one of the objects of the system and then the object may have multiple different states and from one state to another state how the state transitions will take place whenever some event is going to take place that will be described in the state chart diagram. So state chart diagram deals with the state transitions of one object and obviously a system will be having multiple objects and multiple state uh, chart diagrams will be obtained and this state transition from one state to another state of the object will be done when some event will take place and activity diagrams means how the activities are getting sequenced and how the control flow will be obtained will be going through the activity diagrams. It is something like your flow chart but it is not actual flow chart. These activity diagrams are having more and more fun functionalities. Those functionalities are not present in our flow chart. So here we are having this implementation diagram. So we are having this component diagrams. So model static implementation view, model source code, model executable releases, model physical databases and model adaptable systems. So these things are coming under this component diagrams. So deployment diagrams, model embedded system, modern client server system if we require to have the server and having the client machines they are getting connected by some communication network. So they that things can be depicted using this deployment diagram and model fully distributed system. So in this way we have discussed what are the different diagrams are possible and what are the basic purposes and features of using those diagrams. Thanks for watching this video.